We're standing in front of Mount of Transfiguration, Mount Tavor. And uh, on top of it, you can see the church that we are going to climb right now. Um, that village is the Berea. And that's where the rest of the disciples were waiting for Jesus and the three disciples to come back. Jesus ascended to the top together with only three disciples, St. Peter, James, and his brother, John. And the rest were here dealing with something that they couldn't figure out. There was a, um, a small child with demons in his body, um, and they tried to cure him. They were supposed to do that. But when Jesus arrived there, together with the three, with a secret that they couldn't talk about, they uh, asked them, asked Jesus, why we couldn't do that? Mainly because you are small faith, little faith, uh, you are not there yet. And he did it immediately. Then so many stories are in front of you. And this is amazing. And you can see that we are at Jezreel Valley. Then in a way, Mount Tavor is on the... Um, is uh, in the middle of nowhere. I mean, it's so, it's plan, it's around it, flat, and suddenly there's Mount of War. And there is Nazareth. Then, as you can see, oh, sorry, now we cannot see. There are few important places here that we can deal with it. Uh, right there is the village of Nin. That's where he resurrected. Uh, the widow of son. Huh? So many things in one place. Unbelievable. And what about the biblical war between uh, Sisra and Barak? Um, so many, so many, so many things happen on top of it. Are you ready? Are you ready to climb up? Let's do that. Bye bye. It is so quiet here. It looks like I'm the only one visiting now. One of the most amazing places. But before that, I want to show you beneath those trees, Nazareth, city of Jesus, where I am. It looks like I'm above it. Maybe I'm at Mount Tavor, at the Transfiguration Church, Transfiguration Mount. Yes, I am. Then you can still feel that there is kind of a cloud that surrounded that place. Uh, I took a video of that area from downtown, from the village of Nin, when the Jesus uh, resurrected the widow's town. And it's, it was difficult to, to see that, that mount. And we are heading to one of my most favorite churches in Israel. Mount Tavor was a very important place for uh, uh, the Jews, the Christians, and even the Muslims use it. The sun is in your eyes, I know, but I have no other way to deal with it. Um, it's quite in the middle of um, Jezreel Valley, and it's such a strategic, strategic uh, place. And um, from here you can reach Surya of today, Mesopotamia of ancient time, the other side to the sea, and Lebanon of today, Egypt of today, then it's quite in a very important junction, and it's high above everything. From here you can see a lot. Then it used mainly as a fortress, and later on, after Jesus' time as a place of worship. And look up here for it is. 
Although the sun is in our eyes, it's still amazing. At the ancient time, the Jews used to send messages about the holidays, about the beginning of the day of, uh, of Shabbat or the beginning of the month by bonfire. Then here is one of the most important Bitcoin place. From here, they can send the message to Nazareth and to other places around it. Then in that case, uh, then you um the new, they got the message through here and Josephus Plavius took the place and made some walls around it at 66 AD when the Romans came to destroy Israel and they destroyed the temple at 70 AD then it he did it in 16 places in the Galilee one of them was here then you can understand that it was a major fortress, but if we are talking about what's happening here, why there's so ruin, lots of ruins, you must understand that there were so many churches here from the 4th century and up, but they've been destroyed so many times because if you wanted to control that area, you had to control or uh, to take it for you to control it by destroying evidence. Then what you see here is mainly... 12th century crusader church owned by the Benedictines. Amazing, isn't it? The story itself, is, it's such an, uh, a great story. I think one of the most important stories of, um, of Jesus one of the most important chapters in his life. He just came to here after they been together with the 12 at Caesarea Philippus, which is at the Golan Heights today. And that's where St. Peter said, you are the son of God, the Messiah. But he actually a little bit didn't understand because later on Jesus said, I'm going to die in about three days later. I will resurrect. And he didn't understand it. Not you're not. I won't let it happen. Then St. Peter knew with Jesus, but he couldn't understand it until the end. And only here he did it. Then let's talk about the story outside, mainly because it's a church and I don't want to be too loud in that beautiful church, especially when I'm the only one. Jesus came to here together with another three disciples, only three. The rest left downstairs in the village, waiting for them to reach. Wait a minute. Now to reach back. Then in that case, let me find a place to sit. We will be able to talk until then. You can see some of the ruins of uh, the churches that are ruins of a Muslim fortress as well. Um, so many places, and we actually found the wall of the of Josephus Plavius itself. Then we will do. We will actually tell the story according to Matthew, but you can find it in all of the synoptic um, books. But I want to talk, I want to actually read it for you in Hebrew, Doo -doo -doo, which is very close to Aramite as well. I'm talking about Matthew. Um, the Matthew 17 and. לאחר שישה ימים לקח יהושע את קיפה ואת יעקב ואת יוחנן אחיו. After six days, uh, Jesus took Petrus, קיפה, and יעקב, James, and יוחנן, um, John, 
the son of Jacob or James, he went all the way up to a very high mountain. Wala itam le'ar gavoa levadam, alone, without the others. And then he trans transformed himself into the divine. Ishtana le le'inem. Panav za'aru kashemesh ve'bgadav ilbinu kahor. His face were glory like the sun and his clothes became white just like the light. And suddenly, and that is a dramatic moment. Um, they saw Moses and Elijah and they were talking with Jesus. And this is important in, in Hebrew as well because I want you to understand how do you say uh, Moses and Elijah in Hebrew. And Lefet and Yeruel em Moshe, Moses, the Eliyahu, Elijah, which are two important figures in Judaism. Give Kefa, the Amar Yoshua. Adoni, Tov Shanachnukan, Im Tirze, Arselecha Poshalos Sukot, Lechachat, Le Moshe Achat. Now, the, the disciples couldn't understand what's happening here. Suddenly, Jesus is, is, is actually different. He, they saw for the first time the divine nature of him. And he was talking with two important um, figures in Judaism, which they know that are not with us anymore. And the first thing that they actually say, especially Peter, St. Peter, is we're feeling okay, but do you want us to build you three tents? One for you, one for Elijah, and one for Moses? I will say it again in, in Hebrew. Wait, where it is? Adoni. טוב שאנחנו כאן, אם תרצה אעשה פה שלוש סוכות, לך אחת, למשה אחת ולאליהו אחת. עודו מדבר וענן בעיר, שכח מעליהם, והנה קול אומר מתוך ענן. And while he was talking, he saw a white cloud around them, covered them, and then he heard the voice. זהו בני אהובי אשר חפצתי פה, אליו תשמעון. This is my beloved son. You will listen to him. I mean, do you need more than that? Now they know who is Jesus. And when they heard him, they felt so bad, frightening. I mean, I can understand that. And they fell into the ground. This is the voice of God. You don't hear the voice of God every day. Then when it's happened, um, Jesus touched them and say, Kumu Wait, um, stand up and don't be afraid. They looked at him and what they found I saw is only Jesus as human being, nothing else. And when they went down, Oh, look at that. Hello, kitty. There's a lovely kitty here. Hello. Yeah, I know. I love cats. I know, but, but you know my problem? You know that I do have a problem with cats? I'm allergic to cats, but I don't mind. You're so sweet. The, no, it's not by day, Jesus says. Sorry. Oh, yeah. She's touching me. She's mocking me. And, um... When they went outside, I mean down, Jesus ordered them, please don't say anything to anyone. It's still a secret until I will raise from the dead, which is another, um, another problem for three Jewish people that didn't understand that it can actually happen. Another thing that I love there, and is, they say it, but he, if you are the Messiah, then where is Elijah? Elijah is supposed to be here. 
And what they realize is that Elijah, the one who we thought that, uh, we knew that it is Elijah himself, was John the Baptist. Then in that case, it's Jesus, Moses, and Elijah. Moses is the law, Elijah is the prophet, but he is above them. In a way, Jesus is the new Moses, and John the Baptist was Elijah then now is ready to go to Jerusalem to end that story. Let's enter to the church itself. <laughs> Let's say goodbye to the, to the cat. Hello, kitty. Yeah, that I want to pet, but if you want me to talk with you, then it's not so. Uh, it's not the way, the best way to do. Then let's enter to the church. The church is new, but it actually was built on the 4th and the 5th and the 12th century church itself. You saw some of the remains there. And again, I'm the only one. I don't know if that man is part of it, but what you can see here is the museum and the um, monastery of the Franciscan. Let's enter to the church. You can see that there are two towers here, and the other side, those are the bell tower. I mean, he, this is the bell tower, but uh, the story is about Jesus, right there, and Elijah, and Moses. If you didn't understand my Hebrew, then above the door you can actually read everything Latin from the book of Matthew. Let's enter to the third chapel. It's a beautiful Catholic church. And you can see a remain of an old mosaic floor. And in front of you, you can see Moses with the Ten Commands, with a tablet in his hand. You can see Mount Sinai uh, at the other side. And remember what's happened with the rock that he didn't hit him, that, that he hit him instead of talking to him? And you can see it as well. Are you ready to visit uh, to visit Elijah? Let's do that. You can see the engine floor. And we are entering to the to each chapel. And you can see Elijah. And here's uh, some events that happened to him. Uh, not far away from here, Mount Carmel. Uh, you can see his altar next to the false prophet altar he won. And this is Elijah. And the door I can go in to the church. Uh, from here, I want us to go from the main door. You see some ancient part of the church in front of you. Berulucci, the one who did it in, uh, built it in 1927, uh, kept some of the ancient um, parts of the church, which is so amazing. The original church, the original roof was made of alabaster. The idea is that uh, you will be able to see the light. There's a connection between that place to the light. I will do this uh, quietly. Can I, can I go down to the altar?
such a beautiful place, isn't it? But because of um, the climate here, they had to cover it. But still, you can see everything. Sorry that I'm whispering, I cannot talk um, loud here. In that ancient grotto, which was part of the church, ancient church, facing to the east, you can see a few things. Sadly, I cannot go in. I have a permit for that. But you can see here the peacocks, which is a symbol of eternity. There's four mosaic wall, sorry, with symbol of stages of his life, for example, the nativity here, the resurrection. The lamp. Sorry, that's the resurrection. So sad that I cannot go in. But this is amazing. You can see Jesus and the cloud. And um, Moses to the left, Elijah to the right, and the three disciples. Um, above, you can see God Himself, but it's difficult from here. But you can feel the atmosphere. Here can see the eye of God. And give me this. in EJ, you can see a scarf and you can see the Christian Talit. I'm blessing it here, mainly because I didn't send uh, the package yet. We are at the Church of the Transfiguration. We've already been inside it, but I'm trying to climb up to the roof. Um, I'm going to stand on a, a, a Muslim wall that was uh, built here, uh, mainly to protect from the Christians to come back here again. Uh, yeah, it was a huge fight between the Christians and Muslims about that place. It shows you how important that place was for them. The view, I'm not sure that you will see a lot because of the sun, but um, you will understand the meaning of it. The church is new, but what you see here is 
from 4th century and up. Let me show you the meaning of it, of that place. Although, it uh, can be better. Um, you can see the Jezreel Valley and you can understand the meaning of that oscillate month. From here, you can see every part of it. Then if there's an enemy who walking here, you can talk about it. You can actually send a message and you can understand that if you reach that area, uh, you almost conquered um, the word. Oh, the kitty is with me again. Hello, kitty. And Barak, the times of the judge, um, the Bora time, uh, won the war here between uh, Sisra, the from uh, Hazor. But there were so many battles in that area. That's why everyone uh, turned that into their fortress. Remember, we talked about Joseph, uh, um, um, a Jew from, a commander, a Jew from uh, 66 that built a wall around it to protect it from the Romans that were oh, on the way to to destroy Israel and they did that but it shows you that if you did it in 16 places in the Galilee and we are in the Galilee then uh, it means that it's uh, such an important thing such an important issue um, right there you can see um, two things the first one the one that close one with a small uh, roof uh, red dome is the Greek Orthodox Church and behind it is Nazareth. Everything is so close and remember we studied the tour from Nin, the widower's son that uh, he and, and Jesus resurrect. Then you can understand everything is so small here but so important. Let me see if I will be able to go to the other side because the sun uh, will be in our back then we might see a little bit better Nazareth, but I'm not sure that we are allowed to do that. But I'm trying. You can see the monastery of the Franciscans. It's a beautiful Catholic place. And there's a strange man, I must say, that think that I'm a Catholic because I didn't say Catholic, I said Crusader. Say Franciscans, because I was talking about the Crusader time, and they were Catholic. Then uh, I will say it again: Catholic, Catholic, Catholic. I have no problem with Catholic. I have no problem with Greek Orthodox, and no problems with anyone. I love everyone. I respect everyone. And I think if you're watching my videos, you can see the videos from different times of order, different times of uh, a religion. I mean, it's. That's me. That's why I love that job, because I respect everyone. And if I'm talking about respect, Antonio Berolucci, that is the architect who built that church. And you are genius. You are genius. He built so many amazing churches in Israel. Um, Garden of Gethsemane, for example. Uh, which is such an amazing place, and so many others. Uh, and Bethlehem, uh, Bethsahor, the angel chapel. Such an amazing thing to be here alone. I don't remember the time. Um, the church was closed for so many uh, months uh, due to the COVID-19 and now uh, they open it only until 12 o'clock that I woke up early morning at 5.30 to reach to reach a place and I want to thank you for that why to thank you? because by uh, supporting me via uh, buy me a coffee 
I could rent a car and I could reach here. Then this is because of you. Then thank you for doing it. Uh, if you want to know how to do that, you go to the description of that video. Look at the view. You can see that we are in the center of the Valley of Jezreel. Remember, behind those trees, you could see Nazareth. And you can see Mount of Or, although it's not so high, it's only 500 meters above sea level, 1500 feet above sea level. You can see it from so many places. When I'm taking groups to the Golan Heights, you can see it from there. Um, from uh, uh, Haifa, you can see it in some parts. From Mount Carmel, you can see it. Um, it's unbelievable. Such a beautiful place. Then let's go back to the car, but on the way I'm going to stop in two more places. Then please wait. Don't disappear. I know that it might be a little bit long, but it's worth it. We're just like Jesus and the three disciples. They are in a state of shock. They don't know what to do. I'm talking about the disciples, of course. They are walking behind Jesus. And I'm sure that they actually asked themselves so many questions. But immediately, Jesus told them, don't talk about it. I know that it's something that he wants to talk. You have to talk. It's, it's, it sounds like that. I know. But don't do that yet. Don't do that yet. I'm still here. And only after my resurrection, you can mention it. Got it? Only after my resurrection. It's crazy, I'm the only one. I'm sure that this is the Pope that visited Israel at 1964. Here he is. St. Paulus the six, and we're going to visit now another place that he visited, and thanks to you I can do that. I'm going to Armageddon to show you that amazing place. But this is not a, what I wanted you to see then. Please wait, please wait. Look at the garden. It will be less noisy. Oh, here it is. Look at that. There's, there's always someone to take care of that garden. <laughs> like here. I never saw that place alone. The water is amazing. Don't forget that the toilets are at the entrance. And you can see beautifully the Greek Orthodox Church. But the Greek Orthodox Church is usually closed to everyone. And they're not even trying to go there. As you can see, there are more ruins here. A few years ago, there was a huge fire that 
destroy lots of those amazing trees. Eppley didn't reach the top, then here it looks so green. We are the only one. Oh, wait. Did you subscribe me or not? Then if you didn't, this is the time to do that. I do have more than 19,000 videos. You can see the Greek Orthodox Church from here. Look how beautiful it is. And you saw Nazareth. The view from Nazareth, I mean the view of Nazareth from the Greek Orthodox Church is amazing. But I've been there only once. Mm. There was a time that you could enter with a car to here, uh, but now they decided not to, and you know what? I'm not with a group, I know I'm not with old people, then I'm very happy to do that, to walk here. Please stay with me. I want to show you another chapel. The story of, of um, the Transfiguration is an old story from the 4th century. People actually mentioned that place. But there are a few more places that could be that Transfiguration Mount, mainly because the Bible never mentioned Mount of War. But some people believe that Mount, uh, he said that we, they come to the highest mountain. The highest mount was very close to um, Caesarea Filippo, where they came from. And that is far, far away from here. It's um, called Mount Hermon. But there are few churches like uh, Protestant churches that believe that uh, Karne Hitin Hitin Hoon, uh, which is not so far away from here, is the, a better place to believe that it's a Mount of Transfiguration. I'm not going in if it's true or not, which is the best place, but most of the people from ancient time believe that this is uh, the place. And now I'm entering to a close, it's, it's, it's closer, there's not a lot to see anyhow in the chapel. But, oh, I cannot see even the name of it. From here, they, um, that's the place that according to what we believe, see it's a very simple chapel. That's where they, uh, Jesus told the disciples, don't talk about it. Don't talk about it. Oh, there's another three Israelis entering here. I want to show you the gate, which is a beautiful gate. And then we will say goodbye. For the one who say that I'm talking too much, which is true, um, I will upload another video of a few minutes. In that video, I will be quiet and you will be able to pray in front of the Transfiguration site. Look at the view. Look at the view. If you cannot see it, then wait a little bit. We will go out from the uh, wind gate, and the main gate, the only gate actually, to the Catholic part. To the right, you can visit the um, cemetery of the monks who died here. Let them rest in peace.
to be buried at the transfiguration place. What can I tell you? It's an honor. to see Nazareth again before we say goodbye. A fuller city is right in the valley. Uh, sadly because of the dust you cannot see Armageddon but it's not so far away from there as well but um, I'm gonna take a video of it soon Man Gilboa that's where um, King Saul and his son Jonathan died by the Philistines and Nazareth can you see between the bushes the white buildings here it is the now when you know everything about that place, and uh, I hope that you could hear me inside the church because he didn't let me talk, then I'm, uh, what can I say? I'm happy. I'm happy that I did it together with you. Thank you very much and see you in my next video. Bye bye.